Good morning, I'm Dave Ward, and I was a friend of Paul Williams for over 50 years. He was a good friend of mine. Paul was born June 18, 1940, in Tyler, up in Northeast Texas, son of Louise and Jack Williams. His father was a Baptist preacher. My father was a Baptist preacher. And you know what they say about preachers' kids? Paul, in my case, that was the truth. <laughs> 16 years old, Paul got a job as a disc jockey on radio station KBOK in Tyler. I came to Tyler in 1957 to go to Tyler Junior College to play my trumpet in the band up there. And I got a job as a disc jockey on a competing radio station in 1958. Paul worked at KDOK. They did KDOK, KDOK, it had a ring to it. My station was KGKB. There's not much you can do with that kind of thing. And Kata, they had jingles. We didn't have any jingles. We had very little of anything other than what we could put together. Well, radio was very competitive in those days. A guy came to town named Harry O'Connor and bought the radio station where I worked and moved it downtown. Right on Broadway, the main street in Tyler, about a half a block from the, from the square. He put a big uh, picture window there. And the disc jockeys worked just the other side of that picture window. We had a couple of speakers on the building outside. Well, we were street side. We were very visible. KDOT, where Paul worked, was in on the eighth floor of a bank building up there on the square. Not much visibility. We started making some inroads into uh, KDOT's ratings. I have to tell you that Paul Williams called himself the wild child. WDW, wonderful Paul Williams. <laughs> <laughs> he had the greatest theme song of any of us in radio. He used Floyd Kramer's Flip Flop and Bop and all the old disc jockeys here today remember that song. I hated him for that. I wanted that song for my theme song. In radio. I had to use a, a cut from an old Spike Jones album. He far outshone me in theme songs. He had ratings on KDOT radio in Tyler that I don't think anyone ever would surpass. As a young man, he really caught on with the radio listeners in Tyler. He was a really good disc jockey. I was a, one of the worst disc jockeys. <laughs> he and I agreed on both of those points. <laughs> KGKB was making some inroads into KDOT. Kind of, kind of set wrong with Paul. Paul had a 1957 Ford convertible, hard top convertible, where the top folded up and into the trunk. It was a beautiful car. He loved it. Well, one night, late one night, well, after midnight, he was cruising down Broadway in his car. He stopped in front of our radio station, KGKB, and there's our big plate glass window out there. And Paul got overcome with competitiveness, oh. and he hurled an empty whiskey bottle right in front of him. <laughs> that didn't seem to make a big enough hole, so he hurled an empty Dr. Pepper bottle. <laughs> well, we you know just about that time, while well, you could still hear the echo of breaking glass around the corner rolled a tire police car, and Paul was gone. The next morning, on the front page of the newspaper. Warfare in Tyler Radio. <laughs> Harry O'Connor, who was a huckster if there ever was one, he got our engineer to get red electrical tape and outline the jagged edges <laughs> in the plate glass window up there. And that morning, KDOT fired Paul. That afternoon, we hired Paul. <laughs> He said, we know no animosity to this young, fine young lad. He, we're all make mistakes, and we want to make sure that there is a place in Tyler Radio for Paul Williams. Uh, then we hit the ground running after that. We, we really got going there at KGKB, and I got to know Paul Williams very well. We all had to read uh, a little three or four minute newscast uh, during our disc jockey. Uh, time on the air. Every hour on the hour, we do two or three minutes of the news. Headline news off of 
the Associated Press, and Paul told me a wonderful thing I have never forgotten. He said, Dave, if you're ever doing your news, the news on, on the radio, and you lose your place or you drop a piece of script or something, he said, just say, in Washington today, President Eisenhower declared the farm veto bill null and void. He said, that'll give you a few seconds. <laughs> He was my friend and he was true to all of his friends. 